in verse number, we're going to start in verse number 43. The Bible says this, this is Jesus speaking. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and findeth none. Verse 44, then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in, and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for giving us the Bible. Thanks so much for giving us your word, Lord, that we can trust and we can believe what you say because you know what's best for our lives. Lord, I pray that you would help me to speak the truth in love, help me to say the right thing the right way. Lord, please speak through me. Let your word have free course be glorified. Lord, I pray that you help us and show us something from the Bible today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so here's what we see in this passage. The Bible says when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he goeth out and he's looking for rest, and he can't find any rest. So the Bible says he comes back to the house that he was kicked out of. And guess what? When he comes back to this house, he finds this big, nice house. And he goes up to the door and he tries to open it, and the door is unlocked. So he goes into the house. And you know what he finds? That dirty, stinky hog penny left before. When he comes back to it, you know what he found? The house was clean. Everything was in order. There's now furniture in the house, and there's a nice mirror over here, and there's a really nice kitchen with a granite countertop over here, and everything's all dusted. Everything's all swept. Everything's all garnished. Really nice house. How many of you guys want to live in a really nice house? Really big, really fancy. Me too. But you know what? Those devils were kicked out before, and they came back. You know what he found? He found that that house was empty. You know what that means? Nobody was living there. He came back to a house where there was nobody living. There was nobody there to keep it. There was nobody there to protect it. But wait a minute. Somebody swept the house. Somebody came and they garnished it. They they took their little feather duster. And they took some Clorox and they sprayed it. And they wiped the mirrors down. And they, they, they vacuumed the floors. And then they swept the tile. But there's nobody living in the house. Now I'm going to start off with this and then we're going to move on to a different subject this afternoon. But thank the Lord that you're in church. You're in a place where you can learn about Jesus. You're in a place where your mom or dad can bring you to church. You can learn about Jesus. You can learn how to live right. You can learn how to obey the Lord. You can learn how to obey your mom and dad. Did you know that your mom and dad, they can bring you to church? Your mom and dad, they can teach you how to wear a skirt for you ladies. Guys, they can they can teach you how to be a gentleman. They can teach you how to hold the door open. And you know, a lot of times they make you do it. You don't even really want to, but they make you come to church. They make you do right. They can make you read your Bible every day. How, how many of you guys think reading your Bible every day is a good thing? That's a good thing. And I hope you do that. But do you know that your mom and dad can make you read your Bible? Did you know that, that, that Brother Seth or, or Miss Nicole or, or any, anybody in here that's the leaders, okay? They can make you do things that are good. But you may not really want to do it. So what we're going to talk about today, where is your heart? We're going to look at your heart. Where is your heart at? Okay, so we have, we have in the story. All right, look, at, look down at verse number 44. Then say it. I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man was worse than the first. Do you know that there are countless boys and girls who were raised in church just like this church? There are countless boys and girls who read their Bible every day because they were told to by mom and dad. They memorized verses just like we have to memorize verses. They would come on the bus. They would work on the bus. They would sing songs about Jesus because their mom and dad made them. And you know what? They reached a certain age 
where they were old enough to leave home. And you know what happened? They didn't come to church anymore. They don't read their Bible anymore. They don't quote verses anymore. They don't memorize verses anymore. They don't sing songs about Jesus anymore. The devil has them. The devil's, the devil's moved in. And the devil wants to destroy their life. And you know what today, guys? The devil wants to destroy you. You know, girls, the devil is walking about. The Bible says he walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You know what a lion does? He gets down into the grass, but he can't see him. And he waits, and he waits. And when he finds somebody who's kind of at the back of the pack, or he finds somebody who's not really involved in what's going on, you know what he does? He jumps out and he wants to get you. That's what the Bible says the devil wants to do to you. So in this house, there was nobody living in it. Because there was nobody living in that house, those devils could come right in and have their way. They wanted to destroy that house. But you know what? The Bible says we can have somebody living in our house. The Bible says our body is a house. Our body is a place where God himself wants to come in and live. God wants to come into your house and he wants to keep everything clean. He wants to keep the floor swept. He wants to keep the tile all cleaned off. He wants to keep the mirrors all clean. But you've got to let him into the house. He wants to keep you in church. He wants to keep you reading the Bible. He wants to keep you girls dressing right and living right and acting right. He wants to keep you boys singing songs about Jesus and standing for Jesus. But if there's nobody living inside of you, it's just mom and dad on the outside, they're trying to keep the outside clean. One day when you move out, you're going to have your own choice. And if there's nobody living on the inside of you, the devil can have his way and he wants to destroy you. You've got to make sure that you don't just come to church because mom and dad makes you. You don't just come to church because there's candy, because there's fun games. We love to have fun. It's good to have fun. But we need to come to church because we have Jesus in our heart and we want to live for Jesus. All right, so now we have that out of the way. You've got to be saved. You've got to have Jesus on the inside. Now turn over to the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 20. Now let's, let's talk about, let's put that aside. If you're lost, if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you need to get saved. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says He'll forgive all of your sins. And He'll save your soul. He'll come and move inside of you. He'll give you a desire to want to live for Jesus. But a lot of you in here are saved. A lot of you in here, I hope everybody in here knows Jesus as their Savior. This is for you. This is for me. Here's what we're going to talk about. Here's the question that the Bible asks us today. Which way do you lean? We're not going to go to the verses, but the Bible in many different places talks about how we have, if we're saved... We've got the Spirit of God living on the inside, teaching us to do right, leading us and guiding us in all truth, wanting us to sing songs about Jesus and live for Jesus. But on the other hand, on the other side, we've got our flesh. It wants to disobey mom and dad. It wants to listen to the bad music. It wants to save the bad ones. It wants to do the bad things when they think nobody's watching. You've got a flesh. That wants to take you where the devil can destroy you. So, here's what we're going to ask today and what the Bible asks you and me. Because I'm on the same ground with everybody here. We all have the spirit if we're saved. But we all have a flesh that we've got to fight against. Here's the question the Bible asks us today. Which way are you leaning? Which way it draws you? Which way do you want to go? The Bible says in the book of Acts, let's start in, in uh, Acts chapter 20, let's look at verse number 7. Acts 20 verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. How many of you guys ever thought pastor preached a little bit long before? Sometimes I have. Sometimes Sunday morning... I hear my belly going, oh, man, I want to go to McDonald's. I want to get a cheeseburger. 
And I'm not thinking about what he's preaching. What he's teaching from the Bible was, is what will help you live for Jesus. What he's teaching from the Bible will help you when you go out into the world. When, you, when you're on your own one day, you can live for God and the devil can't get you. But I'm hungry. And look, he's preaching till midnight. It's dark outside. You know what I imagine as I'm reading this passage? There's all these people that are gathered together. They're listening to Paul the Apostle preach. And it's starting to get dark. It's about maybe 6 o'clock at night. 7 o'clock at night. It's getting darker. It's getting darker. You know what somebody says? Man, Geraldine, this guy's preaching really long. I'm getting hungry and I ain't got a flashlight on my bicycle. And they want to go home. But do you know what everybody else said? Look what it says. Look, look at verse number, verse number, uh, the end of verse 7. And continued his speech until midnight, so it's dark everywhere. Verse number 8. And there were many lights in the upper chamber. You know what somebody said? You know what, Paul? It is getting dark. But we want to hear preaching. We want to hear God's word taught to us so we can live for Jesus. You know what? I brought a light with me. I have a light. We can stay a little longer. We can stay a little later. We can stay till it gets a little darker. Why? Because I've got a little light. And somebody else stands up. Oh, I have a light too. I brought my flashlight. Somebody else stands up. Hey, I brought my phone. I can use that. They want to stay and hear the Bible preached. Look what it says. Verse number 8. And there were many lights in the upper chamber. They wanted to be there. They wanted to be there. Now in this church, when we gather here on Sunday morning, on Sunday night, on Wednesday night, and all throughout the week, there are people here who are grown up and they're living for Jesus. Some of them were raised in church just like you. And some of them were not raised in church. And they saw how the devil can destroy a life. But you know what they said? There's people in this church that are living for Jesus. The Bible says right here in this chapter, everywhere else was dark. It's the middle of the night, the darkest time of the night. And you know this world out there, on the outside of this building, it's dark. The devil wants to destroy people. There's people murdering people. There's people killing people. There's people lying against other people. There's people cheating on other people. This world is dark. Sin is hurting people's lives every day. But in this church, there are people who are standing as a light for Jesus. There are many lights in this church. People who want to live for God. And they say, you know what? We want to be here. Now let's keep reading on. Verse number 9. Where they were gathered together. Verse 9 says, And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third law and was taken up dead. I need some help really quick. I need some help. Let's see. You want to help me? Can you help me? All right, come here. All right. All right, all right. Come on, come on. All right, stand right here in the middle. Stand right here. All right, now, now, turn this way. Actually, turn back straight. All right, can you be stiff as a board? Be like this. Be like a board, like a soldier. We're warriors. Oh! All right, stand straight. Now, don't don't move, okay? No, no, got, yep, stay straight. Stay straight, okay. Stay as straight as you can. All right. So this way, living for Jesus. But this way, the flesh is in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, stay straight. You know what the Bible says? That man was sitting in the upper room in the window. And he fell out. Oh, sorry, chose fall. All right, stay straight. Oh, soldier, warrior. You know what? This is not even in the Bible. This is just, this is just reality. This is how life is. Now, if he's leaning this way, where is he going to hit the ground? Here or there? Let's find out. <laughs> I won't do that again. Sorry. Now, if I'm leaning in this way and I let him go, I'm not going to this time. Is he going to land there or there? No, here. He's going to land here. Why? Because this is the way he's leaning, right? Alright, thanks. You can, you can lay down right there. <laughs> thanks for your help, buddy. That's the golf champion right there. Alright, let's look at the passage again. Verse number 9. There sat in a window 
a certain young man. You know 